In this video, what we're going to be doing is going over how to create a preview animation using the Make Preview tool in Cinema 4D. This is great when we want to use a viewport render to send to clients or bosses or anyone else to show them what an animation currently looks like. It can also be helpful if your animation is not playing back at the correct frame rate. Maybe you have a complex simulation or MoGraph setup. With all of that done, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about how we can make a preview animation. Um, if you've ever wanted to play back your animation uh, and have it saved out as a movie file uh, and have it really just be the viewport, then this is exactly what you need to create a preview animation. And you can find the preview animation from your render settings. If you left click and hold, you'll see the last option. It's technically called Make Preview, um, and you'll get some options right here. So you do have the ability to decide whether you want a full render or a viewport render. I personally would go with viewport render, um, but if you did want to make a super small full render, um, I suppose that could work. I believe that's how it used to be uh, a long time ago. For the preview range, um, if you wanted to do all frames, right, which will be this out, that number would be zero to 120. Preview range would be zero to 90. If you wanted to manually type in a different frame range, you could do that, or even the new custom frames option. And you can choose what type of movie file you want to save out. Most of those are, are quite old. I wouldn't really use anything but MP4. Uh, and uh, I suppose you do have some different options for presets and quality if you are that concerned. But as this is a preview animation already, I generally don't consider myself uh, or can you know worry about those too much. Uh, for the image size here, um, you'll notice we only have the ability to change the width. And that's because it's going to maintain the aspect ratio that we have set up in our render settings. 960 by 540 is half HD. And so if you were to go to your render settings, you'll see that I have the default 1280 by 720, which is 16 by nine. If I was to make this square, right? If I was to go back to my make preview settings, you would see that now it's still using that same 960 because it's trying to I don't know, I guess that's just kind of the hard-coded number there, the default, but it is now maintaining a square aspect ratio. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you are gonna need a different um, you know, aspect ratio to make sure you adjust it in your render settings before you come here to your preview animation. And once you're happy with the image size and the frame rate, you can go ahead and hit okay. You will see some progress down here in the bottom left, although it, it can go very quickly. And so here's the result a preview animation okay now i would recommend saving this animation out because it does end up in a very kind of weird spot if you don't have any specific location um, saved for your images in your render setting so you would just hit the save icon here um, animation switch it to mp4 oops uh, and then you would get the you know kind of the ability to save it wherever you want from there so that's pretty much it. That being said, there are some things you want to keep in mind with a preview animation. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is kind of the most obvious. And, you know, really, I use preview animations as a way to not send full renders to clients very early on in the animation process where a, where a preview animation uh, is more than sufficient. OK, uh, however, you'll notice I have a bunch of things that, uh, you know, somebody probably doesn't need to see if they're just concerned with the overall timing and pacing and look of the animation. And, you know, that's all of our typical UI elements that we might see, including our move tool. Um, it can also be things like deformers, fields, all of that stuff um, will be visible in your preview animation by default. Now, the way to get rid of that stuff is to come to the filter menu here and choose geometry only. And that will get rid of all of that stuff, including the grid, um, you'll notice that's gone if I get out of my camera, right? Um, everything is clean compared to with this off, right? So the camera drop down, my move tool um, is back. You can see the camera, right? When you turn on geometry only, that is all you see is geometry. And so that cleans up our preview animations, makes them look a little bit better, less distracting perhaps, and then I could go ahead and create it. Now I am still seeing some null objects, which I may or may not want to see those in my final. And so you can go in to the filter um, and you know make your own preset if you wanted to, um, turn off nulls or other generators 
um, because that's what those can be from. Um, but even this is quite a bit better. Now, preview animations aren't going to show everything. Uh, there's certainly some types of animation that don't show up very well. Um, and that would be lights, right? I do actually have an animated light in here. You can see it a little bit right there moving. Okay, uh, you won't see any shadows and that's because by default shadows are turned off. In fact, the only thing that's turned on here is reflections. So if we're trying to make this look as nice as possible, um, we can turn on shadows. Now, these are very rough shadows. Okay, you'll see them a little bit there. Um, you know, they don't look too bad. Okay, uh, but yeah, I think they're relatively accurate. I mean, I can always start my IPR to kind of get a sense of what they look like. And well, you can see that they actually aren't accurate at all. Um, but I suppose they are better than nothing. Uh, another way you could uh, see what the um, shadows look like a little bit better is to toggle off materials. You can see those shadows um, appear to be a little bit better. And so they are kind of improving you know, the viewport quality of Redshift um, over time. Uh, I think now certain textures look a lot better, have more detail. So, you know, who's to say that shadows don't become more accurate um, in the long run? I do have a dome light in here turned off um, just so we can see the shadows a little bit better, um, you know, when we rendered, but I did have to over exaggerate them in order to get them to show up in my viewport, which really isn't something you would want to do, um, you know, for an animation, but uh, just to show you that shadows are something you can see. You can also turn on screen space ambient occlusion. That can add a little bit more detail. Once again, that does tend to get lost if you do have materials on, right? But that is something to consider. And perhaps you're early enough in your project to where you don't have any materials, or perhaps just like, you know, uh, the lighting doesn't need to be too accurate for animation, maybe you don't need materials visible and ambient inclusion and shadows, despite them being inaccurate, uh, you know, are better than nothing. I also want to point out, we do have other things you could turn on here. Depth of field, if you were using that in your camera, magic bullet looks um, as well, other post effects. So it is important to kind of know that you can kind of dress up your preview animation uh, a little bit more. Um, depending on your needs and what you have animated in your project. Last thing I want to touch on um, is animated materials. Now, if you have an animated um, you know, image sequence or a movie file, the first thing to do would be to check animation, animate preview in your material um, in the viewport tab here. And not that I actually have an image in here, but there is a whole separate section um, for setting up the animation um, in an image. Um, let me see if I can find one really quick. Um, and we'll see what we can do about that. But yeah, it's can be a little bit tricky. I have an image. I don't know if it will just even show us this stuff without this, but no. It's not, but usually there's a whole separate tab here for animation if you do have an image sequence or a movie file um, that you can use to control the speed of it and timing. But I wanted to talk more about, say, textures in Cinema 4D that you might create, like um, if you were to animate the color. So here, if I connect this color oops, node, which is animated, and so I'll connect it to the emission color as well, you see that will change over time, just like it's supposed to. Okay, so that's nice. That will show up. Um, reflection roughness. I have an animated noise here. You can see it. It's not the most obvious thing in the world, but you can see it is animating when I solo it. And so if you look for it a little bit harder now, you might be able to see it during our actual animation. And for that, you actually don't need the animate preview um, turned on, though. I suspect that's for the sample here and not well, I should be for the viewport, but who knows? Um, so certain things work, right? Uh, and that's what I wanted to show here. Bump maps, something we have to be careful of as well. Not that I think you would have too many animated bump maps, but in theory, it is something you could have. And so that's set up to a height field. Let's disconnect this and actually just disconnect the color as well. So we can see if we see it. And yes, uh, we may need to 
do a little bit of work here to make this a little bit more obvious if it's animating or not. And it looks like it is. So, mm, I'm not sold. Let's get out of the camera. Interesting. It looks like it is, but it doesn't look like it animates at this point, which is kind of odd, but that's probably a glitch. Uh, and if anything, just goes to show you that, um, you know, animating textures isn't necessarily the most reliable thing. And if that is something you need, then you may need to do a full render as well. Lastly, if I did need to show, um, you know, or create a, a similar preview animation, but wanted something uh, to render a bit faster, I would create a separate render setting here, right? This one could be preview. You could come into your Redshift settings, lower them a bit, shoot, even lower this. Um, maybe even use RT, uh, assuming it doesn't crash your project when you switch to it. Uh, but there are other options as well um, to help generate a lower quality preview animation um, using Redshift if you really wanted to. But just for animation purposes, um, I think the make preview is pretty darn good. Um, I certainly get out of use, a lot of use of it, and hopefully you will find it helpful uh, as well. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.